So here we have, we're going to figure out the electric field everywhere for a, we have two different concentric objects. Concentric objects. This is a term you're going to hear several times, Sierra. They have the same center point. Too. So two concentric objects. We're going to have, they're all conductors in electrostatic equilibrium. We're going to have one that's a solid sphere and one that is a shell. Now it is not a thin shell. It has a specific uh, two different radii. The charge on the inner sphere is going to be positive 3 Q. The charge on the outer shell is going to be negative 2 Q. We're going to identify the different radii here. This one's going to have a radius of A. This could be a radius of B. And this is going to be a radius of C as we move out. And I want to know what is the electric field. We're going to figure out the electric field throughout and the charge on each one of the surfaces. So first off, when R is less than A, what is the electric field? So what is the electric field inside the uh, charged sphere, the positive 3Q charged sphere? Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Here, I can do more than an hour. I know you missed last time, but. Uh, R is less than A. We'll come back to you, Gary. Who's got the electric field inside this? Power up. Zero. You know this because? Laws. <laughs> exactly. We just went through it. It's one of the statements for a conductor in electrostatic equilibrium. We know inside it, it's equal, the electric field is equal to zero. Good. What about the electric field where between A and B? So the electric field located in this area right here. What is the electric field there? Well, we need to go through and use Gauss's law. In order to use Gauss's law, Dorstetter, what are we doing next? What's the shape of the Gaussian surface? Uh, it's still, like, because of the shape of this, it's not actually going to work to have a cylinder. These are all spheres, so it seems logical that we should have a sphere as well. So in this particular case, we're going to have a Gaussian surface, which is a sphere. Okay. We know the electric field is going to, due to symmetry, look something like this. We need to figure out the magnitude of that electric field. Walk through the left-hand side. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, I've got integral of E, D, A, cosine theta, theta is zero degrees. The angle between what and what is zero degrees? The area vector. Good. Notice that for every point that we pick, dA is at 90 degrees to the electric field. Keep going. Uh, pull out E because it's a constant. The electric field is constant throughout on, on the Gaussian surface. So the electric field multiplied by the closed surface the interval of dA. Which is EA. What is the area of the then equal to? What am I going to use for that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what is the area? Oh, is it 4 pi r squared? It is 4 pi r squared because it's the area of the Gaussian surface, 4 pi r squared. Good. On the right-hand side, we have the charge inside divided by E naught. What is the charge inside the Gaussian surface? Nitish. Uh, plus 3q. Positive 3q. In other words, the electric field between A and B is equal to, uh, let's see, 
positive 3q divided by 4 pi e naught r squared, or the electric field equals uh, 3kq over r squared. Look at that, will you? Who knew? The electric field then, where uh, between B and C, so in this area, between B and C, the electric field, please, Bill, what do we get there? Um, is that the one we do the third rule? For the, for the, oh, okay. Oh, do you do the same thing? We actually don't need to do the same thing help them out. What is the electric field between B and C? Rohan. Is it going to be negative 2kq over Not between B and C. Paterola. Is it zero again? Why? Inside. Inside a conductor in electrostatic equilibrium, therefore the electric field between B and C is equal to zero. Because that's inside this conductor in electrostatic equilibrium. Between A and B, it's not inside the conductor. Between B and C, it is inside the conductor. What then is the electric field where R is greater than C? Mohit. Um, I have a question. Yeah. I think it would be a point charge. But um, if it was a thin shell instead of like some, a circle with thickness, yes. would E and not be zero? Or would there not even be if it's thin, If it's a thin shell, it technically wouldn't have any area inside it. So what then, Mohit, is the electric field? Ah, but what is Q? Uh, I would go with just positive Q because we add them together. Because when you add them together, 3Q minus 2Q adds up to Q. So the electric field is equal to KQ over R squared. That is the electric field everywhere. In other words, the electric field looks like this. The electric field as a function of position from zero to A is nothing. Then from A to B looks something like this. The electric field equals 3kq over r squared. From B to C, it's nothing. And then it is from there on out equal to kq over r squared. That is a graph of the electric field as a function of position from the center. Now, I want to know the charge on all of the surfaces of the spheres. What do we know about where the charges are located for the center sphere, the positive 3q? Winter. Remember, they're all going to be on the surface of it. So notice that all of the charges for this one are going to be located right here. So the charge on this surface is positive 3q. So the charge on the surface of positive 3q is equal to positive 3q. Okay. But now I need to get the charge inside, the charge on these two surfaces, the charge on the inside surface of this sphere and the charge at B. So we need the charge at B and the charge at C. If we draw a new Gaussian surface where the radius of our Gaussian surface is greater than B and less than C.
Uh, so it's greater than B and less than C, we get what? What is the electric field where R is between B and C? Jenkins? Uh, the electric field is zero. Zero. So on the left hand side, we get zero. So charge inside divided by E naught is equal to zero. So charge inside this Gaussian surface is equal to zero. Well, the charge inside this Gaussian surface equals the charge at A plus the charge at B. All right, so what do we do? What do we get then? Charge at A plus the charge at B is equal to zero. Thank you. So, um, equals zero QA equals negative QA. Uh, I'm going to do it the reverse way because we're trying to solve for QB. We have QA. This is Q at A. So Q at B is equal to negative Q at A or negative 3Q. So we have a charge located inside right here of negative 3Q. Well then, what is the charge at C. Plus one Q. Say again? Plus one Q. How do you get that? Because the total is negative two Q. So. Q at C plus Q at B has to equal the charge total, which is equal to negative two Q. Therefore, you get, uh, what was it, Q at C minus three Q is equal to negative two Q. Therefore, Q at C is equal to positive Q. 